Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N Y. And the second word is and, spelled A N D. And the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Our first miracle today is from a woman who tells us she was in a terrible car accident where the car rolled and tumbled and went down a bank. Uh, she was stuck in the car. When they came to get her out of the car, they told her that it's amazing that she survived. She had no scratches on her, nothing. It's a miraculous story. And she's now dedicated uh, and, and devoted to be God's friend. Uh, she's attending church services every week, and, and she plans to do that for the rest of her life because she's been so impressed that she's miraculously still alive in a disastrous uh, car accident. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone I handed a car to one day. I was pumping gas at a gas station, and I got inspired to hand the man at the next pump, I hand him a card and tell him, about our radio show, etc. We had something like a five or eight minute discussion. You know, there's not much time to talk at while you're pumping gas and other people are coming in. So we we were fortunate to have eight minutes, but we just got an email from him uh, and he said that that discussion changed his life. He said that uh, he and his family had stopped going to church on Sunday services for several years. They used to go. They They've been, they've been to Sunday schools, and their, all their family had gone to Sunday schools. They all had read the Bible in the past as a family and prayed together as a family. But they've gotten other habits now, and they've gotten out of habit to going to church on Sundays. And that five-minute discussion impressed him so much. I don't even remember what I said, actually. But it impressed him so much that they... He and the family have started going back to church services every Sunday. So I bring it up, not boasting, but just mentioning, as I do steadily for the last four years, um, you never know how a few words that you say might impact somebody's lives. And uh, this is a case where five or eight minutes at a gas station, just telling people about our radio show and giving them a, a card about our website, had the effects of changing a whole family's future. Our next coincidence miracle is from a man who tells us that his grandson was having a brain surgery. He had a terrible accident and it caused some uh, harm, da damage to the skull 
and doctors had to go in and remove something that had apparently they were playing with pellet guns and uh, a pellet got into the child's uh, skull and it was very serious it were, the uh, pellet was uh, lodged in a very critical place and the man intended to put his cell phone on while the surgery was going on so that he could hear reports but he had forgotten to turn it on and he tells us that he got inspired he was doing a couple of things and he knows he got inspired at the right moment that the surgery was supposed to be beginning to turn his uh, cell phone on so that he could hear the favorable favorable report that came out uh, at the end of surgery everything went well and it was pretty marvelous and miraculous the reason i'm sharing this with everyone today is because we talk a lot over the last four years about the reality that god does talk to us he talks to every single person constantly and the way he talks to us is with mental telepathy and we can notice it and the saints have noticed it and taught us about it uh, you can notice God talking to you when you receive inspirations. That's two words in, in one. The word inspiration is really two words, incoming of the Spirit. The word idea is also two words. It's I plus Deo, and Deo is the Latin word for God. So I'm sharing this story about the brain surgery and a man being inspired to turn his cell phone on as an indication of where God inspired the man to remember. But it was God's work. It was God inspiring him. And all of us are having this experience. So the ideas, inspirations you get are very, very often God trying to direct you and trying to get your attention. Certainly when they are good ideas, it's God. When you're getting bad ideas, I don't know what, whether that is your own mind. But I do know when you get a good idea, that's a thought coming from God. And I do know if you're asking God questions, the answers you're getting are coming from God. That's why the Bible in Luke chapter says, chapter 10, book of Luke chapter 10 says only one thing is necessary, and that is keep asking God questions. If you keep asking God questions, he'll keep giving you answers. James chapter 1 also says the same thing. If you want to know what to do, it says, ask God. That's James chapter 1 in the Bible. And John chapter 14 says that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. So if, if you talk to God, the Bible is very clear. God is answering you and the Holy Spirit is teaching you all things. If you're not asking God questions, however, we don't know where you're getting your ideas from. Our next coincidence miracle is also something about someone getting inspired by God. Um, the person shares with us, us that he was on his way to church. Um, and as he was on his way to church, he was running a little late, like most of us do. And he got to an intersection. And because he was late, uh, he had the option of waving the other person on, let the other person go before him. Or he could have gone ahead because he did reach the intersection a split second earlier than the other person. And so he opted to go through instead of waving the other person on. Um, probably some people might have said, you know, the good thing to do, the Christian thing to do would have been to let the other guy go. So he didn't do that. And he went through the intersection. The next intersection, he got inspired. He knows he got inspired because of what happened. He got inspired that he should have let the other guy go because the Christian mentality is always look out for the other guy, always take care of the other guy, don't put yourself first. You know, that's the principle, uh, one of the principles about Christians. Try not to put yourself first, but to consider everybody else and to notice the presence of God in other people. So you're really respecting and honoring the presence of God in other people when you're doing good things for them. So he felt a little guilty. So at that next intersection, he, f he felt inspired because another car arrived in the same, at the same time as him at that second intersection. So he's inspired to wave the other person on, and the other person went ahead. And then what he saw was a great coincidence miracle, because when he let the car go first, he saw the car behind him, behind the car that he waved on, and the car behind him had a license plate with three sevens. So the bottom line of all this is, the Holy Spirit pricked his conscience about 
you know, being rude at the first intersection and the Holy Spirit pricked his conscience to let the other guy go at the second intersection, uh, even though he was running late for church. And the blessing he got was when that sec at the second intersection is when the car was allowed to go first, he saw that the car behind him had three sevens and he would not have seen that if he didn't let the other car go. And by the way, he did get to church on time. Our next uh, coincidence miracle is from a listener who tells us he's very grateful about one week we shared uh, how Jesus was both God and man, and Jesus as a man had to go through the whole process we also have to go through, where we have to discover the presence of God in our souls. As humans, we have to discover that. We have to find the presence of God within ourselves. We have to learn how to ask God questions and how to hear his answers. So we had shared that one week, and he's been doing that since. Ever since then, he keeps working at asking God questions, and he notices God's responses. Uh, and recently, another thing happened. He heard about, we shared another story once about how King David was being pursued by King Saul. King Saul wanted to kill King David. And the Bible explains how King David was in a cave hiding and Saul came into the cave and it was a dark cave and Saul didn't know that David was very close to him and David could have killed him. And when Saul left the cave, David came out and said, you know, I could have killed you a few minutes ago but I let you go free because I'm not your enemy. And they became friends for the rest of Saul's life. So this whole message is that this listener is grateful that we talked about how each one of us, every human being, has to find the presence of God within us. And Jesus also had to do that as a man because he's our model. Jesus is our model as a human being, and he had to find God in, in himself. Otherwise, he wouldn't be a good model for us because we have to do that. And, and Jesus was both God and man simultaneously. And so the man tells us that every time he's eating lunch or supper, he spends a, a second or two talking to God and asking God questions. And that's how he's building his strength and noticing the presence of God within him. Our next coincidence miracle is from a listener who tells us they went to Sunday Mass and at the Mass that they attended, the priest gave a wonderful homily uh, explaining that humans procrastinate. We put things off until later. We don't do things immediately. Rarely do we do all of the things that we could do immediately on an immediate basis. And the priest was pointing out that a lot of times people ask us for a favor. They ask us to do something. Or they mention it would be nice if when you get a chance you could do such and such. And we typically uh, don't do it right away. So the priest recommended if we start noticing the presence of God in other people and we try treating people, other people, like they are carrying the presence of God and they are God's instruments, uh, God's friends, that we would do things right away. So he suggested, the priest suggested, try doing things right away. A lot of them are petty, like it takes a minute, it takes two minutes, some things could take five seconds. So when people ask you to do something, you know, try to give some feedback uh, that you're gonna take care of it right away or in, in perfect cases, do it right away. Uh, don't complain about it, et cetera. Take that mentality. And, he, and this person tells us they've been doing it with great success. Their family is noticing it and thanking them profusely. So they are spreading goodwill by putting into practice what they heard at Sunday Mass by the priest's recommendation. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. See